Hi, everyone, and welcome to a special Bella Asks episode of The Ethicast. I'm your host, Bill Coffin. As longtime members of the Business Ethics Leadership Alliance, or Bella, know, we offer a special concierge service by which Bella members who have any questions at all about ethics and compliance can send them to us, and then our internal experts will provide an answer or they'll direct them to a helpful resource for more information. Some of these concierge requests are rather specific to a particular company's needs, but many of them represent larger themes facing Bella members. That's why we are using this show to thematically respond to high-level questions from the Bella community. And joining us to give those responses is Bella Chair Erica Salmon-Byrne. Erica, welcome. It's wonderful to see you again. Thank you so much, Bill. I'm so happy we're doing this series because, you know, as you know well, um, we get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these um, from our Bella community. And when you have that level of volume, it's easy to take a step back and, and pull out some themes. And if one Bella member has a question about something, chances are good. There are five people out there in the ecosystem that, that are asking the same questions. So we might as well answer it. Absolutely. And the question we have for this episode is a really, really, really good one. Mm -hmm. And it is, what does it look like to build a good multi-year compliance plan? And perhaps more importantly, what goes into one? Yeah. Yeah. It's a great example. It's a great question. Um, and the, the first place that I would point you to is learnings from what I like to call our sister control functions. So um, audit is a terrific example of this. Uh, talk to your audit chair or, or your the head of your internal audit department rather about how they do their multi-year planning process because chances are good um, they are building a multi-year planning process where the most specific part of the plan is the nearest term piece of it, but the rest of the plan goes out a couple of years. And so there's a lot of learnings you can take from audit or if you have a big safety culture, sometimes you know, safety is another good potential uh, partner you can talk to or um, quality is another one that you can often talk to and, and have conversations with them about how they're mapping out their multi-year plan. A compliance multi-year plan, a good one, is going to have a couple of elements in it. It's going to have uh, rolling risk assessment elements, right? So what parts of the business are you assessing for risk and when um, and how? So, you know, when, how, uh, and, and what. Uh, it's going to have a lot of training detail because increasingly what we are seeing is companies are moving away from what I call the peanut butter method of training, right? Spread it, spread it, spread it thick and spread it wide <laughs> um, and really trying to deliver training that is uh, targeted at outcomes. So it is, it, the, the day has finally begun to arrive where we are willing to listen to and learn from the adult learning uh, experts in our midst mm -hmm. and build training plans that are uh, outcome driven and not um, activity driven. So if you are trying to give employees information that allow them to make the right choice and to use that information at the right time, you're going to be a lot more specific with your training program. You're going to be a lot more specific with the timing with the job function uh, specificity, you're gonna break your training into pieces to try to get it as close and possible as possible to when somebody's gonna use it. And all of that requires a lot of planning, right? So really thinking through, what's the rhythm of my business? Um, are there particular times of year where different parts of the business are busier than others? Are there particular times of year where we have specific risks and uh, as opposed to others? And really trying to think about how you then educate appropriately across that particular spectrum of course, taking into consideration all of the other people in your business who are training as well. So the best multi-year training plans we see are multifunctional, um, take into consideration function, timing, modality, length of training, and allow for this kind of training in segments as opposed to the old school, spread it thick and spread it wide. Nice. Um, the other piece that I would say lends itself really nicely to a multi-year uh, kind of uh, approach is policy reviews. So how often am I updating my policies and when? Um, and then the, the third piece, of course, is, um, is really going to be around, uh, as I said, at the, at the outside risk assessment work. Um, and so that is going to include both kind of planning for risk assessment, culture surveys, engagement survey data, overlapping data coming in from different sources. And then, of course, also thinking about um, how am I partnering with audit? because audit is out in the field, getting insights. What are the ways that I can potentially leverage some of that, those insights for my own work? So those are the things that go into a good multi-year plan. Um, and a, multi -year, a good multi-year plan is gonna allow you to uh, ask for budget, right? Because you're gonna have a sense of what your activities are gonna look like over the course of the next 18 to 24 months. It's gonna allow you to, to think through uh, staffing activities, right? So where are my people going to be overwhelmed with different activities and how am I gonna address those issues? 
And then, you know, the third thing it is, it also allows you some flexibility. If you know what's coming and you have a, a, a surprise drop in your lap, right? It's mm -hmm. looking at an acquisition, you're divesting a particular part of the business. It allows you to understand what you're swapping out to be able to address that particular issue, as opposed to wondering what it is you might have overlooked. Now, in addition to the the peanut butter method that you mentioned, are mm -hmm. there any kind of are there any other sort of classic pitfalls uh, that go into a multi year compliance uh, plan? Uh, you know, planning session uh, where you know people think I think this is a good way to go, and they don't realize they're actually setting themselves up for failure. Yeah, um, the biggest one is doing it in the silo. Uh, I would say that the, the people we have seen that have struggled the most from a planning perspective are the ones who do it solely inside the compliance program. So really thinking through um, how do I make sure with my with my control functions, um, my control function partners, you know, how do I make sure that I'm timing everything the way I need to? My my classic example is the compliance officer who rolled out a culture survey three days after phishing training. Not a good idea, right? Because everybody got this link and they're like, no, -uh -uh, you're not catching me, right? I spot you a mile away. So, um, you know, yeah. being able to plan for those kinds of things to say, you know, here's my plan, here's your plan. Whoops, right? Like we need to, you know, adopt accordingly because of, of some of the overlap that, that might be happening. So, but that's the biggest one I would say is, is trying to plan in a silo. Indeed, indeed. Well, Erica, on behalf of Bella members, but also just on behalf of everyone everywhere in the ethics economy. Thanks so much for coming on the show today and for lending us your insights and your understanding on these topics. Bill, it is absolutely my my pleasure. And to all the Bella members out there listening, uh, keep the questions coming because Bill and I will come back. I'm Bill Coffin, and this has been a special Bella Asks episode of The Ethicast. For more episodes, please visit the Ethisphere YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ethisphere. If this is your first time enjoying the show, please make sure to like, and most importantly, to subscribe either on YouTube or on our podcasting platforms at Apple, Spotify, Google, and Amazon Music. To learn more about Bella, please visit bella.ethosphere.com to request guest access to the Bella Member Resource Hub and to speak with a Bella Engagement Director. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, remember, strong ethics is good business.